This is Will Sanchez. My special guest tonight is John Montanaro. I met John not on the road, but actually right here in Manhattan Neighborhood Network. He was playing his music and it had to do with music therapy. And I was very intrigued by it. And much to my delight, I discovered he was a runner too. So of course I had to invite him to Gotta Run. So please welcome John to the show. Thank you, Will. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Now let's get started by sharing with us a little bit about your background. Where were you born? A little bit about your family? A little bit about your schooling? Sure. I uh, was born in Iowa and, and grew up there and uh, had ample woodlands and fields to run around in as a kid. Uh, but my father was from the East Coast, so we always holidayed out here. And uh, I knew I'd move here. Eventually I loved New York. And I moved here um, after going to school. I went and had my, I got my master's at NYU in music therapy. Were you? Sure. Got the master's at NYU. What was your athletic uh, endeavors at that point? I ran cross country in high school, and, and really I was primarily a tennis player. Mm -hmm. and, and, but running was always part of my workouts for tennis. Mm -hmm. And it just that's what stayed with me. Tennis fell by the wayside, and uh, I've continued to run approximately 15, 20 miles a week. Okay. So you're a purely recreational runner in the sense where you're doing uh, half marathons or anything like that? You know, other than cross country, I never uh, aspire to run other than for myself. It's become, it was, it's always been a, a real meditative time for me. Mm -hmm. um, and what I feel really integrates body, mind, spirit for me and keeps me grounded, literally. A lot of runners say the same thing. Mm -hmm. But uh, how did you get into the music therapy? That, that's where I first knew you. How, how did that come about? I was pursuing music um, really all my life as well, and uh, I just found myself moving more and more toward uh, in more of a humanistic direction mm -hmm. in my songwriting, and it just made sense. I, I discovered NYU again, um, just really spontaneously, uh, and they had a great program, it's one of the best in the world. So I went, and, uh, and where I was heading as a freelance musician naturally segued into my training as a therapist. Okay, what's involved in that kind of training? It's uh, advanced training at the master's or PhD level, mm -hmm. um, and it's on a trajectory for board certification or licensure in order to practice. Uh, in the state of New York, it's a licensed mental health profession, so there's a, a lot of work is done with um, uh, developmental psychology and, and, and group dynamics, psychotherapy techniques, counseling techniques, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then music, music skills are also built upon as you go through the program. Well, that's interesting. So you're combining your artistic musical skills with the knowledge of helping people that are in desperate need. Absolutely. And, and somehow music comes into a very important role in that. I seen a couple of movies a long time ago, Awakenings, right. that I think it used uh, music therapy. Are, are those movies realistic in the way they they interpret or present music therapy? Yeah, I mean, I think as far back as Awakenings was, I think it was in the um, early 80s that it came out, and, and that referenced music not as the impetus for the awakening mm -hmm. of Robert De Niro's character, but as a, a, a stimulus that was offered within his environment that he responded to very well. So it didn't name music therapy, but it, the implication is there. Later movies that have come out um, have certainly referenced music therapy as a, as a I think there was profession. a recent one that, that came out, but I can't remember the, the name. I see the, I see the face of the, uh, of the man, but do you remember that one? Yes, I do, and, and the name is escaping me too right now, Will, uh, but it just came out this past year, right. and, and uh, it was about a music therapy relationship. Right, right, with the father and son thing. Absolutely, and, uh, and it referenced the work beautifully, and that's always a trick because you know we have a notion that the guru music therapist offering music, um, but it's really not that what, that that way in the clinical setting. It's actually a part of an integrative treatment approach. Okay. okay. Now, music comes pl to play in, in a medical field in other ways. Um, because I remember seeing shows where uh, people that are being operated on and under anesthesia, and they, they play some kind of music, I guess maybe classical music, I'm not sure. In those other environments, music is, is, plays a role. Is it a different kind of music in that case? Absolutely. At Beth Israel, where I work as a clinical director, it's, music, it's a medical music psychotherapy program. So the work often occurs not only just in the psychotherapy domain of expression and, and emotional catharsis, but it works on a medical level to perhaps reduce the amount of um, anesthesia needed mm -hmm. if someone can entrain to music that they're listening to. It's not limited to classical. It, it's really the preferred music of the person. And so 
and that's an important part of the work, the assessment process of music therapy. Okay, so the person is, is it gets involved in the, in the process of the music. Absolutely. But I for so haven't run into that myself. I talked earlier, you said this is a very popular thing to do. Uh, in which hospital do you work for now again? Beth Israel Medical Center. Uh, it's the Louis Armstrong Center for Music and Medicine. And uh, it was formed uh, by Dr. Joanne Lowy in 1994, the program. And it's thrived ever since. We're doing a lot of research right now. And okay. using music to affect pain in lower bi uh, back surgery is something that I'm actually overseeing. Interesting, yeah. interesting. I, I think a lot of runners would be interested in uh, using musical therapy in their recovery. Absolutely. Is yeah. there, uh, if you have any linkage about uh, sports injury and, and musical I, you endeavors? Know, I, I think, well, it really comes down to using music as a natural form of tension release. If you listen to music of any genre, there is a, that's how music is written in terms of tension release cording. And so if we can use that music to mirror what's happening in the body naturally, mm -hmm. we can connect, help connect someone back to um, their most vital resource of coping, their own mm -hmm. resilience that often gets checked at the, at the doorstep. That's side. interesting. Uh, as you know, a lot of, lot of runners with, run with their music on, but they're running it. I don't think they're thinking more of a recovery or anything like that. They're thinking of it more as an inspirational thing to get them to, to do the, uh, the miles. Absolutely. So, your comment on that? We listen to music when we work out or do chores because it's, it's motivational. And there's a reverse process happening. We're actually in training our heart rate and our respiration rate to the groove of the music that we're listening to. That's part of the motivational part. As a music therapist, we reverse that process when needed, and we entrain acoustic music to the heart rate and respiration rate of the patient. Interesting. So it can work both ways, and we use both directions in our work. I, I never thought of it that way. I used music when I was growing up, when I studied. I was able to study better with music. But I grew up in the, uh, in the city of New York, and there's a lot of street noise. So the music was just very, very soothing to me, and I was able to study. But I never connected the way uh, you guys do it. A lot of literature on that, that very concept. There's an interesting psychologist by the name of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi, who wrote a book called Flow. It talks about music as being a source of grounding for certain neurologic functions so that the higher faculties can then attend to task. Um, Interesting. You have brought uh, new thinking into my own <laughs> personal use of music. I don't think I take advantage of it uh, as yeah. much as, uh, as I should. Interesting. So in, in your personal life, what kind of music do you like? I really like all kinds. And, and uh, I say that with a bit of caution. Uh, a little heavy country western may not be my thing, but I, but I have to know how to access that genre if it's the favorite music of a, of a patient or client that I'm okay. working with. So I can access it musically and, and okay, reproduce so, it. So interesting. So part of your profession, and not only keeping track of mental health techniques, but also keeping track of what's going on musically. How do you incorporate that? Do you, do you build a story, or, or how do you? How does that help the patient? Certainly, the patient's narrative, uh, the story of, of the sequence of events that brought them to the hospital, is becomes part of the assessment process. And if that emerges in, in the form of a song, great. If it's if it remains at a nonverbal level through improvisation, that's okay too. But uh, if, if someone likes country western and they're in deep pain, I, I know enough about country music to incorporate some uh, basic riffs, bass riffs, or, or, or rhythmic um, lines to, to create, to deliver that person into the context of something they love. That person take the music with him, let's say that person's a runner, how would they incorporate it in their lives? I, I think uh, it's certainly a certain amount of education it goes into comes into play when the patient is discharged. We can maybe impart ideas of how they might integrate music for their own care. Mm -hmm. But the work that we do is really based on a live music therapy, live relationships. So recordings um, are valuable, but we don't use them so much in our work, but perhaps as a tool mm -hmm. for when yeah, someone's discharged. Yeah. 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 Fortunately, you're going to play some music for us in a little bit. Can you tell us about the, the pieces that you've chosen for tonight? Sure. I've chosen four different genres of music. They're all original songs, and, and they all, in their own way, uh, capture certain aspects of, of human experience, human life, which is a big part of the work that I do as a therapist, is to really bear witness to, to who someone is, not just the illness, but who's their partner, who's their, how did their life come to this point, what do they do for a living, 
to really honor that through listening and, and seeing and, 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 and bearing witness, which is something we don't often do in this busy society. Yeah, that's very interesting. The music is original because it's based on the story you're hearing from the patient. And there's a lot of words, lyrics to the music. On some pieces, there are. there's one piece that's especially lyrical, and I think you're, <laughs> if I get through it, you'll be happy as I am. Uh, it really encapsulates themes. These are fictional pieces. They're, okay. they're fables or stories, if you will. Okay. But they, but they, I think, encapsulate themes that I often work with, themes of loss, separation, isolation, transition, change. These are big life themes that patients uh, may be experiencing in the hospital. You work with uh, end-of-life situations, hospice? We work from the beginning of life in the neonatal intensive care unit through end of life. Okay. And um, everything in between. So, so, so would babies need musical therapy? Absolutely. We, we're actually hosting um, next Tuesday a big uh, conference on neonatal music therapy, music therapy with neurophysiology and um, and uh, neuropsychology components and as an integrated treatment for neonates and their families. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. One final question before we we break for for music. A course of Pregnant women like to play music for their babies sure. or their spouses do. Is there something to that? Absolutely. I mean, I would speak to the symbiotic relationship. If the mother's relaxed in her breathing and her overall presentation, the baby will be relaxed. And oh. this is prenatal and postnatal, you know, okay. the, the music of the family we call Song of Kin, um, coined by Joanne Lowy. Um, and it's really looking at what music makes the couple, the family, okay. tick. And that becomes the music. It's not doesn't have to be Mozart or okay. Beethoven. What you would really say is the music affects the mom as well, and that has great relationship with the baby inside. Absolutely. But do you think that's taken advantage of? People should be taught about that. I think you know slowly that teaching is happening, but there's a lot of literature out there that says it has to be, you know, Bach for babies or Mozart for babies. And what the, the only issue is that this wonderful music, and it may be the music of choice, but mm -hmm. the problem with that is if the baby for whatever reason, um, is born premature, and the mother has done all these things that society has told her to do, then what is she left with? This, I was told this would work, and it didn't work. So we, we try to dispel those misconceptions and okay. get back to the music of their family. Okay. What, what do you sing? What did you sing? As and a what, child, or would you, yeah. uh, that kind of thing. That becomes the music of Wow. Family. Well, listen, on that thought, we'll take a break, and we'll come back and listen to John play some music. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to open with a piece that's kind of a nice summer piece, actually, since we waited so long for summer. It encapsulates a theme of relationship and uh, how we get there in our life, and that's something that I had mentioned that comes up in my work a lot. Uh, away we go. the one A look over her shoulder tells him she's the one Funny how it happens in the unexpected places An endless stream of faces that he'd stumble into something new Never meaning to He's the one A smile across the room tells her he's the one funny how it happens in the unexpected places those bummy faces that she'd stumble into something new never meaning to they're the one the way they move together tells you they're the ones Funny how it happens in the unexpected places They saw each other's faces, now they've got what they weren't looking for And hanging on for more, yeah ba da ba 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 da dun 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 da ba da 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 du du da da Da-da-da-da-ba-ba-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da
They saw each other's faces. Now they've got what they weren't looking for, and hanging on for more. They're the one. This next uh, piece is. Uh, Talks about a theme of of uh, freeing the soul, and that's something that uh, a theme that comes up, I think, is, is reconciling uh, body, mind, spirit integration. And this song uh, captures that in um, maybe a forlorn way. I've used this uh, beginning of life and at the end of life in my work. Grow in the sun, grow little one, pure as a rose, pure as one who grows in the sun. cast no stones to feel the peace's heart as one the rain comes down Caged the soul now to soar in astounding grace. Now sing in the fields of the day, take your rest in the cool wooded shade. And awake with the sun, and arise to the dawn of a thousand drums. And that last piece actually was from a, my album <clears throat> called Goed. The first and the last piece we're going to do are from another album called Code de Moncree. <clears throat> so this is actually kind of uh, a little autobiographical, but I think it certainly captures, uh, again, a sense of uh, what it means to... Um, integrate one's life and, and nature and uh, everything we do. I like the sun shining in my eye. I like the cold 
of wintry skies I like to feel the breeze dance across my face and the rain upon my hair won't bother me most days I like the morning and the quietude it brings, the smell before the rain and laughing in my dreams. I like the feel and the touch of love. I like it all. I never get enough It's these chains of reactions That make the angels cry But my soul is dancing daily And my body's digging life It's these chains of reactions That make the angels cry But my soul is dancing daily And my body's digging life it's a human thing, yeah. It's a human thing, yeah. To live life, you have to feel life, yeah. It's a human thing, yeah. Tallied up religion, and that's led me to my own. And I found my own philosophy on what my life has shown. I don't take my space from others, I live peacefully. And I like to take my life in all of its varying degrees. And it's these chains of reactions that make the angels cry but my soul is dancing daily and my body's digging life it's these chains of reactions that make the angels cry my soul is dancing daily and my body's digging life it's these chains of reactions my soul is dancing daily and my body's digging life and it's these chains of reaction yeah yeah last piece is a fable uh a lot of words, a lot of words. And so, um, as I said when I was talking to uh, you, Will, is if I can get through these words, we'll both be happy campers. So uh, <clears throat> it's a lot of fun. Again, and we'll talk about, I think it talks about themes, life themes, and how people interact, interface with each other, and, and where that all goes in terms of what we get out of life and take from life and uh, give back to life. So. Meet a man from Caliban Who took a wife from Trinidad When she found just what he had she took the way from good to bad, you know, sad man had man. Tries hard to understand how to play and learn to make the tables turn so that life's sweet treasures aren't easy. Oh, poor man couldn't stand. 
Living life of a lowly brand, pipe dreams, mighty schemes. Driving home to be what it seems, you know, quick prize, big eyes. All her dreams to realize she wants her share, it's fair. To use a man that's running scared of life. Sad man, had man, feeling good and oh so grand. Cause he's running fine with that cat divine. But her love for him's as thin as a line. But she's liking the fun and she's digging the scenes. What's really on her mind is how to spend the beans. Cause when the time is right, you gotta understand. She wanna take all the money and leave the man Life in the fast lane won't pay Cause it goes away Just as fast as that green that you save for a rainy day And what's sad? A zero score of what you lost against what you had Renders only a momento in the form of a scarf with a T for Trinidad Sad man had man Feel don't so awful hand Cause he lost his show when she stole his dough Just another tough lesson life likes to throw Well I told the man don't cry and pout You're not always gonna like what life dishes out It's a drag to find yourself left behind By a fast move getting from the other side Life in the fast lane won't pay Cause it goes away Just as fast as that green that you save for a rainy day And what's that? A zero score of what you lost against what you had Brand is only a momento in the form of a scarf with a T for Trinidad Here's a tale about two in a game How they work on each other like one and the same Take a simple man from Caliban Turn him inside out with a woman's hand You know, sad man, had man don't know so awful hand Cleave try to learn what greed and shame Yet greed and shame can together Spurn Got it Thank you for listening <laughs>